Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Music Rambles with Josh. That might have sounded a little more smooth and a little less pitchy than you're used to hearing from a recorder, and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, is that this isn't actually the kind of recorder you're probably used to. This is an alto recorder, whereas you're probably more familiar with the sultry tones of the soprano recorder. But putting that aside, another big reason why the sound difference was so big uh, is because of the amount of breath control that was at play. Being able to control how much uh, is coming out of your lungs at any given time, and the quality of what's coming out of you at any given time uh, is going to have a big impact on your ability, whether that is as a singer, as an instrumentalist, or even just in your everyday life as a speaker, just wanting to amplify your voice. And so today, we're going to focus on some vocal warm-ups, which I hope will help you no matter which situation you find yourself in. We're going to start, of course, with breathing, but then move on to uh, some other topics which may also be of interest. Now, uh, for some of you that are already in a choir at school or have professional or personal vocal training, some of this may be a hat to you, and that's great. And I'd love to hear some of the other warm-ups that you guys use at home. But I'm gonna start off with the very basics and build up from that, again, to focus around five different categories uh, of vocal control, which you may find helpful. Starting, of course, with breathing, which is really the foundation of all of this. But before we get started, you guys all need to stand up. As it happens, standing up, will actually give your lungs more space to expand. It will also give you access to your diaphragm, which as we'll talk about later, is a really important part of singing. So stand up, 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 stand up. To be able to control how much air is coming in and out of you at any given time, incredibly important. So to do this, we're going to practice breathing in and breathing out a fixed amount of air in a fixed amount of time. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count us in, one, two, three, four. We're going to be breathing in for four beats, and then we're going to be breathing out for eight beats. And as we breathe in, we're trying to fill our lungs as much as possible so that at the beat of four, they are completely filled, and breathing out such that at the count of eight, our lungs are completely empty. And as a result, with a bit of practice, we should be able to effectively breathe out a fixed amount every single step along the way. This might take some practice, but that's okay. That's what this video is about. I'll run through it once, but you can feel free to hop back and do it again in the video as many times as you feel necessary. Ideally, at least a few. So I'll count you this in. One, two, three, four, in. Out. All right. See, I even had a little bit of air left in at the end, so we probably could have done that better. Let's do that one more time. We'll breathe. I'll count you guys in. One, two, three, four, in. Out. There we go. All right. Now we'll do that again, but this time we're going to breathe out for 16 beats instead of eight. This might be a little bit challenging, so feel free to just breathe out for as much as you can, for as long as you can, and work your way up to 16 as you practice some more. But we'll still be breathing in for four counts and I'll count you in for four to begin. So we'll go in one, two, three, four, in, out. All right, hope you guys did a good job at that. And if not, again, feel free to keep on practicing. And if that was easy for you, feel free to try that again for 20 beats, 24 beats. Keep it going and going. I'd love to hear uh, in terms of how long uh, you can breathe out uh, in that count. Feel free to let me know or to reply in comments. However, you prefer to again, touch or share your results. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm sure our fellow Shads would love to hear from you too. So that's breathing. So our second uh, element that we're going to focus on is the diaphragm. Now, most of us, when we speak in our day-to-day -day lives, we use our throat voice, excuse me, our throat voice. This uh, is easy enough to control in a day-to-day -day sense, and when we're singing, it helps us access higher notes. However, for more sustained singing, we want to be breathing from our diagram, excuse me, our diaphragm, which uses our chest voice, which is gonna be a little bit deeper and give us more sustained control. 
So let's just breathe for a second. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand on my tippy toes right here so you can see. We interrupt your regularly scheduled music ramble to bring you a correction from legendary dance instructor, Amp LaFire. Amp? Hey everyone, this is of course your friendly neighborhood amplifier. In the music ramble with Josh about vocal warm-ups, Josh incorrectly recalls the location of the diaphragm. Under which major organ is the diaphragm actually located? For some reason, Josh is pointing down here. I don't know why, there's nothing breathing related down here. The diaphragm is located right here, directly beneath the lungs. Thank you, Amp. We now return to your regularly scheduled and well-intentioned, if misguided, music rambles with Josh. We're going to put our hands at our diaphragm, which is right around where my lanyard name tag is. Try breathing in and out with that. You should feel the expansion and contraction of your diaphragm right here. All right, and to make sure we've really got into high gear, we're gonna practice doing some consonant sounds. These sounds are Let's try doing those all together. And as we do, feel the way your diaphragm moves. Make sure that you can feel the motion of those sounds in your diaphragm right here. So we'll go. And again. Not only that is that great exercise for a diaphragm, also helps you build up your beatboxing skills if eventually that's something you want to do in an acapella choir. All right, our diaphragm is warmed up. Now let's work on vowel sounds. And to do that, we're going to take a brief interlude into what I would like to call a phonetics ramble with Josh. Today's uh, topic is the diphthong. Uh, the diphthong uh, is a phenomenon in some languages where when we create a vowel sound, we actually add in an extra sound that we call a semi-vowel sound that isn't necessarily part of the pure vowel. So if we consider, for example, the English word day. Uh, if we would look at the phonetic alphabet, uh, international phonetic alphabet, uh, we have three symbols here. We have the D, which is the D sound. We have the E, which is the A sound. And we have this uh, superscript J, which represents the Y sound, which is that diphthong. So we say it, day. However, in many languages, there is no diphthong in those vowels. So for example, in French, this word looks like it'd be pronounced the same, but there's no diphthong. We say day. Again, just the D and the E representing the D and the A sound without that diphthong Y. We also see the same, the difference between the English word to and the French word to. You can see that we have the diphthong W, if you take a close look, in a to, we, that again represented uh, kind of in the spelling here, whereas in French, we would say to, which does not have any sort of diphthong. So when we sing choral music, we tend to also try to make our vowel sounds as pure as possible without getting those diphthongs in. So, in order to practice that, we are going to say five words. Mi, me, ma, mo, mu. And remember, we're trying to avoid those diphthongs. It's not me, it's me. It may take a little bit of time to practice doing that, because it's not a way we're necessarily used to pronouncing stuff in our day-to-day -day lives. But even if you don't end up singing choral music, uh, it's still a good tool to have in your back pocket so that you can have a little bit more control over the vowel sound that you produce. I'm going to take a quick drink of water because I'm feeling the strain on my vocal cords. You can feel free to do the same. And now, let's say that all together. Me, me, ma, mo, mu. All right, and now we'll incorporate a little bit of the singing aspect. I'll play the C. And now we're going to sing it together on that same tone. So we're going to go in one, two, three, four, uh, and I am going to um, hold each word for two beats. So one, two, three, four. Mi, me, ma, mo, mu. All right. And again, you can feel free to repeat that as many times as possible in order to get the exercise down. I'd recommend a couple of times, but to keep the video short enough, we're gonna keep moving. All right, so we've done our vowel sounds, so it makes sense that next we're gonna focus on consonant sounds. There's a sentence that helps us get a lot of these sounds enunciated to the best of our ability, and that goes like this. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. And we're gonna make sure we enunciate every single consonant sound that is in there. So we're gonna say the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. 
but we're gonna say it a little faster. Let's do it faster together now. And one, two, three, four. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. All right, hopefully you got that down. Now we're going to add in that same element and to make sure that we're practicing those vocal range um, lessons from yesterday, we are going to sing it descending. So we're gonna start on the G. You can start on whatever G is most comfortable for you. And we're gonna go down a semitone every time we say it. We'll go a little bit slower than we were just practicing. All right, and we'll start in one, two, three, Four. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth. The lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. All right, that's the bottom of the bass ring, so we're going to stop there. You may have noticed that as I was descending through that, eventually we reached the bottom range of my vocal ability. And so when that happened, I actually just jumped it up the octave and then started singing down as well. So you can do that too whenever uh, you're doing a vocal warm up in a group or even by yourself whenever you reach that lower limit, rather than just stopping there, you can hop up back to a more comfortable range and then keep working down. And the same goes if you're working in the other direction. If you're going up and reach the higher limit, then you can jump back down to a more comfortable octave and then work your way up again. So I encourage you uh, to go back and do that exercise again, and this time to keep on going uh, in that more comfortable octave once you reach that lower range. All right, one more drink break, and then we'll take uh, our final exercise. All right, so we descend and now we're going to ascend. And as we do so, we're gonna hit all of those notes in our scale. So the scale is gonna be the final uh, element that we are going to practice. So we're gonna do an arpeggio up and then a scale descending down. So it'll sound like this. And the words that we're going to sing with that go like this. We're gonna say them right now. I can sing high, that's the arpeggio, if you give me apple pie, that's working the scale back down. So all together, it'll sound like, I can sing high if you give me apple pie. All right. And we're going to do that every single time we say it, we're going to go up a semitone. And once again, once you reach that higher limit and you can't sing any higher, jump back down to a lower range that's more comfortable and we'll keep working our way up. So we'll go in a one, two, Three, four, I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. I can sing high if you give me apple pie. Wonderful, everyone. That was a full octave. So if you're able to go all the way from the middle C to the C5, that's fantastic. And if not, that just means you have a different vocal range. And I'm glad that you stuck it out too. So again, you can feel free to practice that as many times as you like. And that brings us to the end of our vocal warm-ups. So thank you guys all for joining me. I hope that these were all useful and they'll be able to use them, whether you're using a wind instrument, whether you're speaking, whether you're singing, or maybe even uh, playing a sport that involves a lot of breathing control, like swimming. All of these can come in handy in your practice.
I would love to hear from you guys in terms of what other vocal warm-ups you use and how well you did at these exercises. Feel free to get in touch and share your results by Google Chat, Google Classroom, whichever nebulous method you'd like to use. Uh, once again, I am also open uh, to snail mail. I mean, only literal snails. I don't take slugs. Um, next week, uh, I should say that for the weekend, uh, Miso Grambles with Josh is going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus uh, so that we can all take a break over the weekend. Hopefully this gives you plenty of fodder to work with over the weekend to keep on practicing. And of course, plenty of fodder to work with for today to get your Shaz song in uh, before the deadline, which is tonight uh, at right before uh, midnight Eastern Standard Time or whatever the end of the day is in your local time. And if you think that you won't quite be able to make that deadline, do just let me know. I want to have you in the video, but I need to make sure that we get all the submissions in in a timely fashion. Uh, and next week, we'll see. Maybe I'll have more music rambles to share. But as you also saw from my interlude earlier, I have some other stuff on the back pocket that I'd love to hop into at some point. But in the meantime, this has been Music Rambles with Josh. And now's your chance to close the window before things get real pitchy.